I was trying to do Dr. Horrible, um, didn't, didn't turn out. Um, welcome back to Jekyllstown Great Plays, and today we are going to be doing these mini-sodes of The Last Door. I'm actually doing things a bit differently, but this is a different episode, so, um, so, um, I am actually taking a bit of a risk. I have class in, like, 40 minutes. Um, I don't think this should take that long. Again, if I, as I remember, these are, like, really short, um, little vignettes, almost. I wouldn't even call them mini suds. I don't know. Um, I might have to cut this off early and make it, like, a two-parter or something. Um, like the alt-tab videos I recorded. Um, so let's do the morgue. So we are playing as this guy. I have not finished here yet. Besides, the weeping angels will get me if I do it. Here I have the police and medical report. The latter is still blank. According to the police, the deceased names Father Ernest Glynn. The man immolated himself. Alright, so this is after episode 2. The sky is cloudy outside. It's actually kind of interesting how... The the game almost frames pretty much every every character's perspective outside of Devitt's as more correct. Although actually considering what happens, that might not be the case. I don't know. Um, the because this guy so because my first thought was when um, when he's like, oh yeah, um, this is Ernesto. I'm like, okay, so the Ernesto is that self emulating actually happened. Um, I'm sure something wrong with the water pressure valve. A metodical model built of actual human bones. Okay, that's charming. Pincer. Uh, scalpel. All right, water pressure's dead. Uh, do I? Have, I'm not finished here yet. What do I have to do? Water pressure valve. Water pressure valve. Oh, here we go. Uh, we will see if the police report is right. Uh, good lord, what a mess. Yeah, it looks right. Uh, so we do the scalpel first? I don't know, I'm not a surgeon. Damn it, Jim! I'm a, I'm a aspiring game developer and let's player, not a surgeon. I ain't sure if we need to cut it all, okay. Well, at least she tells me when I'm doing it wrong. I will know what to do after a preliminary, preliminary examination of the cadaver. The skin is all scorched. Causes of death is probably shock caused by the sudden burns. Well, at least you didn't burn to death, I guess? The horrible way of passing. What could lead a man of God to commit such an act? All that remains is to file the medical report so he can receive the proper treatment a fine gentleman deserves. Let's do here is file a medical report. Um, I was actually um, talking with my dad about the. I'm just so I recorded. I'm actually recording this pretty early in the morning, uh, 10 a.m. Um, like this is kind of late for me. I'm an, I've always been kind of an early bird. Um, but uh, so I was talking to my dad about. I I recorded episode four last night, and he was like, he was like, you. Um, you, uh, he was like, you might want to make sure, like, your windows are closed and stuff because, um, because you might, um, you might wake up the neighbors. And I was like, yeah, you're probably right. And he was like, yeah, I'm, he, he plays Battlefront, um, the new ones because he's a, um, he's, he's a Philistine. Um, so he plays the newer Battlefronts, um, with his with um, his brothers-in-law, my my mom's brothers, um, and I can still I can sometimes hear him yelling. Um, so he, and he admitted it. He was like, "Yeah, I, I have to work on this too." Um, yeah. So let's see. So he still puzzles me. If he wanted to commit suicide, why did he do it in such a painful manner? Well, she could 
drugged or intoxicated, I should check his stomach for signs of poisoning. Alright, good. He's telling us how to do a incision, I guess. Alright, I need a sharper blade. Alright, scalpel. Like, literally, all I know about surgery is that, like, thing, this, that common pop culture thing is like, uh, I need a scalpel. Give me a scalpel. And they hand him a scalpel and they kind of, you know, they're making the first incision, but that's all I know. I'm, I don't think I have the stomach or the, um, or, like, the lack of anxiety required for, like, for this type of job, um, at least from what I know. I don't know, I just don't want to hold someone's life in my hands and, and have, and have, have to live with screwing up if I did wrong. Um, cut open to content. So, scalpel again? Oh, I guess that worked. I was like, I thought I didn't think that was gonna work. What is this? There's something strange in here. It looks like a piece of paper. So I'm keep some going while I track the thing. So I've been, I'm trying to make, dude, this voice is a very, um, a very, like, like, you know, a guy who works in the morgue, who sees this kind of stuff all the time, and has to, like, kind of emotionally, uh, respond to, well, Ernest Glynn, Jeremiah Devitt, Alexandra D, and, um, who's that last guy? Um, oh, is that, I can't read it, uh, Hugo Ashdown, maybe? Um, I think that's the, I think these are the, these are the four witnesses. But, what about the guy who died in the very beginning? Um, I still can't remember his name. Spectre immediately. All right, so I don't think I ever did. I have to use the scissors. Um, I don't know. So let's do another one. Uh, if there's anything like 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 the opening of episode one, I'm gonna I'll put a content warning in the in the title. Um, after being certified of your guilt by a peer jury, we find you guilty of the wicked and violent murders of 14 innocent and sick people. Because of the sentence, I hereby authorize to execute you at this very moment by hanging to death in the sight of God. You know, hang by the neck until you are dead, yada yada yada. This is Victorian England, after all. Would you like to make a final statement before we proceed? Um, okay. Silent movie. Uh, why would you say that I'm mad? You should have seen how mercifully I proceeded. It's worth love. I saved them. I released them. Now they are in a better place. Uh, yeah, sure, dude. Do you still believe I am mad? Kind of. Yeah. Or just trying to justify your actions. Okay, so that's the, um... I love it when they, when they use just sound, you imagine. I mean, yeah, it's really, these things are really short. Um, this is a, just a, you know, these are extra things they, I think they added for this edition of the game. Um, and also, they're, they're not, they're neat, and they, um, yeah, and, that's, and, you know, that's why this is, like, a bonus episode. Um, it's weird because these, the law, like, the, the last Zordies, these were, like, those were, like, an hour, like, five, not an hour and a half, like, five and a half hours. Like, most, like, three of the, two of them were over an hour and a half. Um, so, it's actually, it's kind of weird that this episode's probably going to be much shorter than that. Although, I, again, I can't afford to have, to spend that much time on um, on this game right now, um, I'm probably gonna record, uh, episode one of season two tomorrow, um, I wanna do it on, on non-work nights, cause I work early in the mornings, and to the others, they are all dead, I would like to talk to her, oh, are these the nuns, yeah, oh, the, oh, this is, this is the German guy, she has only spoken nonsense since she woke up. Is it nonsense? 
or is it only appear to be nonsense? Remedies in China and glass jars. This Miz. Oh man, they use he uses Miz. Actually, I wonder when the first use of Miz was used. I always, you know, not to not to virtue signal, but um, I generally prefer to use the term Miz. Um, partly, you know, it's not just it's not. I mean, it's it's not just um, it's not just a a virtue signaling thing. It's I mean, it's not even just a moral thing. It's also just practical. Like Miz is is simple. You don't need to like worry about marital status or some other weird thing. It's just Mr. Miz and then, um, yeah. I mean, it's kind of like um like Native Americans. It's 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 not just it's not just you know my one of my history teachers in high school was like it's not just politically correct. It's also just correct. And it's way less confusing because I, I obviously I never use the term um, like Indian or, or American Indian because one it's still wrong and two it's more syllables than just Native American um, and it's also like when I'm actually talking about Indian people from India you know I'm talking about Indian people from India it's, so it's way less confusing. Sound of this Catholic monastery. Yeah. Good afternoon. My name is Johann Kaufmann. I'm a doctor. Would you mind if I asked you a few questions? Please be careful with what you ask. Mrs. Parnell's state is delicate. German people, in my experience, don't usually talk the way I'm, like, making them out of me. I don't know. I don't really can't... It's funny. I can do German pronunciation really well. I can't really do German accents very well. Um... I'm perfectly fine and able to talk, sister. Thanks for your consideration. Now, Doctor, I understand you want me to repeat my story. I would be thankful to hear it indeed. I'll stay outside if you need me. I am a sane woman, Doctor, in complete control of my mind and reason. You do not dare to question it. I certainly wouldn't. Then I will commence. I woke up in the dark. The room was small, so narrow that I could touch the wooden walls just by raising my elbows. This happened right after you were attacked? No, I think quite some time passed since that. I can barely remember anything of that while. When I got out, I found myself in my, in my parents' house. I hadn't been there since, since they sent me to school. Did you see anyone there? Your parents, or maybe someone you know? No, they were not in the house, nor was any servant I had known in the years of my childhood. I was alone. I could feel the humid air on my skin, and could smell the scent of the long time abandoned. I walked the rooms, unsettled by the silence. The place had the bleak feel of a ruin. Then I saw someone. On the opposite end of the corridor, an old woman stared at me. An old woman, who was she? How should I know? I hadn't seen her before. I followed her out through the back alley and into the streets. I got lost in the burg of Aberdeen. The streets were just... So Aberdeen's right next to the, um... The boarding school, right? I think that's the case. The streets were deserted and a thick fog covered everything. Though I had seen the old woman through the fog once or twice... I, th I thought I had seen the old woman through the fog once or twice, but it could have just been sh been just shadows. Did nobody walk the streets? Where was everybody then? I I want I actually suspect I hypothesize that 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 was the a, a false choice. The same response, but you know I don't really care. I I don't know, but I haven't said there was nobody. I met some people, vagabonds. One of them was a priest. I remember a novelist and a boy, too. The priest, where did you meet him? I met him in a stable. Good Lord, he said mass there among the beasts. Could you imagine the profanity? It's interesting, um, it's interesting how Catholic 
a lot of this is, uh, this story is, especially since England was, like, really Protestant, if I remember right at the time, but it was also Anglican, you know, or maybe I'm just, maybe there were a lot of Catholics, I'm, maybe I'm just extrapolating, um, extrapolating, um, extrapolating from the United States, which is very <laughs> Protestant, you know, like, I'm, I'm thinking, the, the first thing that came to mind was the, um, the guy who wrote the Left Behind books, and he was, like, some nut job anti-Catholic conspiracy theory, which I have problems with the Catholic Church, but this guy was like, Catholicism is near the evil, and it's a fake, Christianity, and all, yada, 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 and I'm like, yeah, okay, dude, whatever. Um, yeah, and, um, yeah, the... Uh, oh yeah, and we've only had, uh, JFK was our only Catholic president, which is kind of interesting. Um, there was this, there was this weird idea that you were only loyal to the Pope, and I was like, I can kind of see that. Also, like, you're, you're not loyal to your reverend, you know, to the leader of your church? Like, anyway, yeah, tell me more about the novelist. The woman, the woman had never written a word. She created only in her mind, you know. She could tell the story sentence by sentence, with perfect precision, and I can even hear a piece of her last work. What was? Do you remember anything about the novelist's work? Yes, the piece she told me was something like, The shadows of the past soon melted within the land that loves silence. Through the fog they walked, found themselves lost. Hoping for a sign from their gods, they set camp on the beach where thirty birds awaited to meet their crown. So the boy, what about him? I like how they just they just were like, yeah, we're not gonna we're not gonna give you one dialogue option and not proceed until you click it. Um, I came across an abandoned carriage. The horse was long dead, its bones still harnessed to the cart. There was a young man petting the carcass of the animal. Did you talk to the boy? Could you talk to this young man? He was deaf, but I think he could read my lips. When he spoke, he did it with a clear accent. He said he could only listen to the songs of the departed. I see dead people. <laughs> what happened then? As I walked, the fog got denser. I could barely see anything around. I finally met the old woman. She didn't say a thing, but gave me a cardboard card, and then she left. She gave you a playing card? Oh, this is... I think this is the... Wasn't there a, someone... Wasn't there a deaf person in, um... In episode three? Um... I want to say yes. Um, she gave you a playing card. It's a tarot. Yeah, so I think this is the tarot lady. It was one of those used to tell fortune. There was a such sin, such sin. It's it's totally different than than Christian prophecies. There was a drawing on it of a veiled person holding a lamp. Then the mist seemed to clear out, and I could finally see the lamp illuminated. What do you mean? The fog opened to a giant clear space. Not in the city, it was a barren land bathed by a dark sea and something else. I'm getting, I have some memories resurfacing a bit, um, but those would be spoilers. So keep watching and you'll find out. Yay! What was it? It was there. It looked at me, the burning dark inside, the shaking, the scream, that vision. As I cannot understand. What is it, Doctor? Have I finally lost my strength of mind? Honestly, I believe you. I am sure that what you lived was real. But I'm afraid I currently lack any proof that can confirm your account. I am sorry. I should leave. Thank you for your time. It looks like a tarot card. Dun dun dun. Alrighty, last one, Beechworth. Beechworth is the guy I was thinking of. So, Beechworth was not one of the four witnesses, I guess? So... Oh my, is this Beechworth's 
son? Grandson? I don't know. He does not look dead, but just asleep. I barely knew him as he was traveling the world. What would be a man with no aspiration for the other side to inspire or lead him? Wait a sec, okay, what would be a man as aspiration for the other side? Is that like the, um, the other side of knowledge, like behind the veil? Um, is that a bad thing? Like, again, there's a lot of, like, kind of anti-intellectualism, which obviously science and stuff can all go too far. I'm not trying to deny that, but, um, but, um, yeah. Uh, but also, it's, it's a bit... I mean, pretty much all the gothic stories aren't the cause of... You know, Frankenstein... Frankenstein and the monsters, their lives weren't ruined by the monster's creation. It was ruined because Victor was too much of a prick to actually, like, take responsibility for any of his actions. Um, but more on that when I cover the Wanderer Frankenstein's creature. I knew it would come to this. Your father was a terrible mess of a man. I am only grateful that he brought you to our home soon enough, not long after you were born. I hold no doubt that you will learn from his bad example and grow up to be a righteous gentleman. Ah, uh, fuck you. What could there be greater than the efforts of mortals to rise from their miserable condition? speak later, young man. We're busy. He's so, so sad. He was most dearest to me. <laughs> yeah, we're not gonna talk to the... I'm sorry, I just kind of like thought about what the, the other two assholes were saying. It's like, oh yeah, we're not gonna talk to the son of the father. The son, the son of the person we're holding this wake for. Also, where's, where's the mom? Where's Miss Beechworth? You know, your father was a complicated man. He had a strong character and was stubborn as a mule when he had taken the determination. He, he believed he... He had a mission in this world. Though I'm not sure he knew exactly what it was. That which avoids his description, the unknown, provides men with a reason to exist. I don't necessarily agree with that, but, um... This is the most sorrowful day. Mr. Beechworth was a great man, lad. Who are you? This is an obscure domain. The secrets taken by man from the silence of nature and death. It's secrets. You are young Beechworth, is that right? Your father left you everything, Anthony. The house, his accounts, uh, and all his belongings for you to receive when you come of age. He was very specific in his testament, though, that you should receive that you should receive this promptly. His personal book log. There are these are the memoirs of my life, my research and knowledge of the other side. Use them wisely, son. Alright, those are actually, before I go, I actually do want to talk about, um, the, the use, let's go to the YouTube and just look it up, um, just look at something while I talk, um, I do actually want to talk about the use it wisely thing, because in, the, um, so, what's her face, <laughs> what, did I just seriously refer to Mary Shelley as what's her face, okay, um, that's a thing that I did. Um, anyway, um, Mary, Mary Shelley kind of did a George Lucas in that she didn't like a lot of parts of Frankenstein and, um, and she, and, and so she did a revision and, and, um, and, um, that's, uh, it's kind of a shame, and that's the one that, like, the revision is the one that almost everyone knows. Um, we still have the original text, and I actually much prefer the original text, partly because I'm still, like, young and radical, and she was trying to tone that down a bit in the, um, 
in her work. Um, let's see. Let's see what options are. So. I thought there was an option for like 16 by 9. Maybe that's what it's at or something. I don't know. Um, anyway, so Mary Shelley is like. So in the original text, you know, for those of you who don't know, the framing device of Frankenstein is there's this, there's this super like enthusiastic explorer who's going. He's going to go to the North Pole because they hadn't gotten there yet in when Frankenstein was written, and. He's like sailing along, and he's all like caution to the wind. Everything's gonna be great. I don't um, and um, and in the um, and in uh, and then he meets he meet he rescues Frankenstein, and he sees the monster, but you don't know it's the monster. Although you probably know since you're reading the book and you have like pop cultural osmos osmosis, um, and. And so he, you know, the monster goes, he's like, yay, um, and, and he meets Frankenstein, and he's like telling him all about it, and in the, in the original text, Frankenstein basically is like, okay, dude, we need to talk, and I'm not saying this is a bad, what you're doing is bad, but you need to learn from my story and learn how to do better, um, and in the, um, in the, in the, in like the updated text, he's like, oh, like, whoa, is me, you're having the exact same problem that I had, yada, yada, and it's like, it's like, no, he doesn't, Victor, you are just refusing to acknowledge any consequences of your actions, like, and it's actually interesting, because it, it, it's kind of framed as, like, Victor was right, but also, if you do a little thinking, like, I always, like, I always thought, even before I knew about the text, I was like, this didn't have to turn out this way. He could have made the monster, and it would have been this great scientific achievement, and he also could have, like, not been a deadbeat dad, you know? Um, more like the classical Prometheus than the modern Prometheus. Um, and, uh, I guess that, I mean, the modern Prometheus is, is a whole thing, and I... I generally actually find I have disdain for the idea that modern dads are all deadbeat and, you know, we need to go back to traditional religious, yada, yada, yada. Anyway, um, the, that's a whole other topic that I'm not, I don't want to go into. Um, but, but, um, but Frankenstein's, like, refusal to, um, I actually want to click on continue and see where that leads. Okay, so it's basically the last, last moments of the first season. Um, so, Frankenstein's... So, in, it's interesting because in the, um, in the... It's almost more bittersweet than just straight up sad in the original text. In the original text, you know, Frankenstein loses everything. He loses everything, you know? The monster gets just... a used and and mistreated and like and and so he's just like he he, he doesn't learn he, he just lashes out you know he's like no one is gonna accept me so I'm just gonna fight back and um and the and and so and at least and and you know the wood monster does is definitely bad but I honestly, I honestly, I honestly feel way worse for the monster than they do for Victor, because Victor is like, Victor is this, um, this, um, uh, you know, Victor has privilege. He has, he's got money. He's got, he's got friends. He's got Clerval who will stick with him for, for he puts Clerval through all kinds of shit, and, and, and Clerval dies because of him, um, and, well, also because of the monster, but again, the monster has no one, the monster is, the monster is completely alone, and he gets attacked wherever he goes, so I, I'm sorry, I, I'm sorry, Victor, but I'm feeling way less sad for you than that, than that wretch that you created and then abandoned to a world that would hate him.
anyway, thank you for coming to my TED Talk. Um, but actually, actually, before I before I go, they actually. So what I actually before I, I have my TED Talk's not over yet. What I wanted to say, what I wanted to talk about was um, Victor. Victor as the so in the original Victor being like, okay, dude, you need to not fuck up like I did. Um, is and I like it because um, he's um, he's at least learned something. So that's why that's why I say it's kind of more bittersweet than tragic. Is is because Victor is like, okay, everything went to shit for me, but I can pass on, and I and I recognize that I was at some there's some part of me was to blame. Obviously, I, I'm not completely to blame for how people treated the monster and stuff, but I also, again, abandoned him. Um, and, you know, I if I was standing next to this guy and I was like, hey, this is my guy, he's really smart, you should listen to him, people would at least, like, not attack him on sight, probably. Um, whereas having Victor just be like, oh, woe is me, like, you, you don't, you, you have no idea, like, you're you're going towards certain destruction, and, um, and, um, and, and it's, it's like, no, dude, people went to the North Pole, it happened, it wasn't, like, you can, you can do this, but you just have to be smart about it, you know, um, and that's the, that's the thing that I think happened with a lot of, and I, I really should not do it. Um, but I, that's what happened with a lot of, a lot of these old gothic stories, especially when early Hollywood got their hands on them, because they, they boiled it down. It was, they basically turned it into a more a puritanical, moralistic, like, don't do this, don't, like, don't make life, that's God's job. And it's like, yeah, but, again, it didn't have to end up that way. So it's not like, don't do, you know, Jekyll and Hyde is as much of a critique of Victorian society as it is of Jekyll and Hyde, you know, we all kind of have a Mr. Hyde that, um, that, um, that, that part of us that almost feels like, a, I know I have this, 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 like, almost different person inside of me, it feels like a different person because, it, you know, that's part of, like, a baser, like, ah, not, I don't want to get too much into it, um, but it is, it's, but I channel him. I, I bring him out in, 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 in specific contexts where it's not going to hurt anybody. Um, when you don't allow people to do that, it just, um, it just finds its way out in other ways. Um, and, and so, actually I watched the, the early silent version of Jekyll and Hyde and I hated it because it basically took that lesson and was like, Oh, Jekyll didn't conform to all society's rules, and that's why he fell, and you should learn from this, kids, and it's like, no, um, uh, he didn't, like, like, you guys should have been accepting of his quote-unquote base desires, which, and to, to steal, to paraphrase, um, Red from Over the Sarcastic Productions, by Victorian standards, could have been anything from cannibalizing orphans to doing drag. Um, so yeah, now I'm done. Thank you for coming to my TED Talk. Thank you for watching the shortest Last Door episode I've done. Um, thank you for listening to my long rant that I think was like, like 10 minutes after I had already finished the other minisodes. Um, yeah, uh, thank you for watching. I will see you tomorrow. Um, oh, I'll, be, I'll see you, yeah. I'll see you tomorrow for the next, the, the first... We're starting season two of the last one. I remember it's actually being better. So, and I really like season one. So, yep. Um, love you all. Do all the YouTube things. Like, comment, share, subscribe, ring the bell. Um, yeah. Um, thank you so much for watching. Um, and I will see you in season two. Goodbye.